I ran into an article in the New York Times a couple of days ago that began with the line, the brain has an amazing capacity for recognizing faces. This had the effect of making me snort derisively because I have prosopagnosia, better known as face blindness. My case of it isn't as serious as the eminent neuroscientist Oliver Sacks was. Sacks couldn't recognize his own face in a mirror. I'm not quite that badly off, but I don't have anywhere near instantaneous facial recognition. I tend to remember people as lists of features. He's the guy with the brown hair and the gray beard. She's the one with the long blonde ponytail and three piercings in her left ear. And that fails, of course, if people change their appearance. I had a student one time who, who cut her hair very short. I'd had her in class the previous year, and when she walked in on the first day of school, I honestly didn't know I'd ever seen her before. But of course, there are sneaky ways around that sometimes. A while back, I went to a local pharmacy, and one of my former students was at, was at the counter. And when I referred to her by name, she smiled and said, I thought you were face blind. And I responded, I am. You're wearing a name tag. Despite my scornful snort at the article in the Times, I was pretty interested in it because it described some research published in Cell by two scientists named Lei Chang and Doris Sal. Chang and Sal are both neuroscientists at Caltech, and what they did was they used an fMRI machine to study monkeys and see how they responded when they were presented with faces. Chang and Sal write, Primates recognize complex objects such as faces with remarkable speed and reliability. Here we reveal the brain's code for facial identity. Experiments in macaques dis demonstrate an extraordinarily simple transformation between faces and responses of cells in face patches. By formatting faces as points in a high-dimensional linear space, we discover that each face's cell firing rate is proportional to the projection of an incoming face stimulus onto a single axis in this space, allowing the face cell ensemble to encode the location of any face in the space. Using this code, we could precisely decode faces from neural population responses and predict neural firing rates to faces. Furthermore, this code disavows the long-standing assumption that face cells encode specific facial identities confirmed by engineering faces with drastically different appearance that elicited identical responses in single face cells. Our work suggests that other objects could be encoded by analogous metric coordinate systems. Put more simply, the brain seems to encode facial recognition using a small amount of cells, by some estimates around 10,000, that respond in a particular way dependent on a face's deviation from a certain baseline face. This creates what Chang and Sal call a face space, a mapping between facial features and a pattern of firing in the brain. Chang and Sal got so good at discerning the face space in monkeys that they could actually tell which face photograph a monkey was looking at just by looking at how the, the brain's neurons responded. So what that means is that we don't have particular cells devoted to particular faces, a concept that was once referred to as the Jennifer Aniston cell. Instead, we simply respond to the dimensions and features of the face we observe and map that in our brains onto a face space that allows for a recognition of a nearly infinite number of faces. Sal suspects that there are other types of encoding in the brain that will work the same way. She has the following to say. There is in neuroscience a sense of pessimism in that the brain is simply a black box. Our paper provides a counterexample. We're recording from neurons at the highest stage of the visual system and can see that there's no black box. My bet is that that will be true throughout the brain. All of this makes me wonder what's going wrong in my own brain. I can certainly see and recall facial features. I'm not, as I thought when I was younger, simply unobservant. But somehow, even knowing the features doesn't create any kind of recognizable mental image for me. Honestly, I can't even picture my own face. So for people I know well, I could actually list off their features. Gray hair, crooked nose, blue eyes but it doesn't come together into any kind of a picture. This results in the odd situation of being able to list somebody's features without really having any idea what they look like when you put them all together. So anyhow, if at some point I pass you in the street and don't say hi, I'm not being cold, I'm not being unobservant, and I'm not pissed off at you. I simply don't know who you are. It'd be nice if, like my former student, everybody walked around with name tags, but in default of that, I guess I'll just go on muddling around in a sea of unfamiliar faces as I have most of my life. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. Resources are down there, and please subscribe to our channel. Thanks.